much will taking a few days off from running hurt my fitness? It's one of the most common questions we get from runners struggling with an injury, fighting the flu, or hesitant to take a much needed rest from training. As runners, we are all paranoid about taking a few days off, generally thinking it will ruin our months of meticulous training. Lucky for you, in this video, we're going to one, dig deep into the research on how quickly you lose fitness when you stop running for a few days, a week, two weeks, and three weeks or more. Two, analyze how this impacts you both metabolically as well as structurally, i.e. your muscles. And three, give you a quick and easy chart based on the research for exactly how much you'll slow down. Plus, if you stay tuned until the end of this video, I'll show you a calculator that can help you calculate exactly how much you'll slow down for most common race and training distances. Let's get started. Before digging into the research, we have to give the caveat that when we look at the effects of taking time off for running, we have to analyze the detraining from two perspectives. First is your metabolic system, such as aerobic fitness threshold and VO2 max. Second is your structural system, such as your muscles and neuromuscular coordination, how fast and efficiently your brain can tell your body to perform and execute a specific movement. Both of these systems will be impacted by time off from running in different ways. I also have to add the caveat here that for most of the research we'll examine, participants did little or no cross training while taking time off from running. I actually find this to be more helpful because we can't assume everyone can adhere to a rigorous cross training schedule. Effective detraining on the aerobic system. Because VO2 max is one of the best measurements of a runner's physical fitness, I will use it as the baseline to compare the effects of detraining on your aerobic system. To be brief, VO2 max is an individual's maximum ability to transport and use oxygen during exercise. I'll link to a video we did with more information if you need it. Recent studies show that there is little reduction in VO2 max for the first 10 days following inactivity in well-trained athletes. It is prudent here to mention that all of these guidelines assume you are a decently trained runner having trained consistently for a four to six month period. Beginner runners will lose fitness at a slightly faster rate since they have a smaller base of fitness. After two weeks of not running, studies show that VO2 max decreases by 6%. After nine weeks, VO2 max drops by 19%. Sorry, couldn't find any data on the three to eight weeks post inactivity. After 11 weeks of no running, studies demonstrate that VO2 max falls by 25.7% from peak physical fitness. So as you can see from an aerobic standpoint, you have very little to worry about if you have to take a break from running for two weeks or less. This is very important for runners, those runners that need to take a hiatus because of a small injury or are nervous to tip out taking downtime after a long training segment. A 6% decline in VO2 max can be made up with one or two weeks of solid training. While percentages are fantastic, what do these numbers really mean for runners? Let's use the example of a 20 minute 5K runner. A 20 minute 5K runner has a VO2 max of roughly 49.81 milliliters per kilogram per minute, estimated using a formula. After two weeks of no running, the 5K runner would lose 6% of his VO2 max, which would be 46.83, and now would be in 2105 shape according to most estimates. After nine weeks of no running, the same 20 minute 5K runner would now be in 24 minute shape, 5K shape. After 11 weeks of no running, our poor running friend would be in 2530 shape. Effect of detraining on the structural system. While the reduction in aerobic fitness has been tolerably studied in an applicable manner, the effect of detraining on specific running muscles has been harder to find. However, the little research that does exist about detraining in general purposes that the most dramatic reduction in fitness occurs within a 10 to 28 day window. Before and after this window, detraining from a structural perspective isn't severe. What does this mean? After seven to 10 days of not running, you will lose some muscle power and coordination, but not enough to totally derail your goals. With a few specific workouts, such as hill sprints, you'll be back to your pre-detraining levels before you know it. If your break from training is longer than two weeks, then you'll have a little bit to make up before you can get back to personal best shape. So what does this all mean? Research shows that you shouldn't be too worried about losing significant fitness if you're running from a break is less than two weeks. You'll lose some conditioning in your aerobic system and muscles, but pre-activity fitness will return quickly. Again, this assumes that you have a 
healthy and consistent base of training for a four to six month period prior to taking time off. It's not the end of your career if you haven't been training for this long. It simply means that the reduction in fitness will be slightly more pronounced. After two weeks of not training, significant reductions in fitness begin to occur, and you'll have about two to eight weeks of training, depending on the length of inactivity, ahead of you to get back to your previous level of fitness. Basically, here is an easy to follow form chart. Now I did promise an easy to use calculator to help you calculate how much fitness you'll lose and what increase in your race times you should expect. You can download this calculator in the description or by clicking the link that should appear on this video now. By no means am I suggesting that taking time off from running is an enjoyable experience. However, sometimes it's inevitable or for the best in the long term. I hope this article answers all your questions in a practical yet scientifically supported way. Please feel free to comment and share with your running friends. Now the next question you likely have is how do you adjust your training when you need to take time off? Well, click the subscribe button and turn notifications on because that's what we're going to dig into next week. See you then.